Hi, I'm Rajiv, and today I'm here at the Metropolitan Museum of Art to do a deep dive into the world of lace making. Many people visit museums to look at the art, but another thing that these institutions offer is a place to do research, a place to go in and look at old paintings or meet curators and have historic references that are accurate that you can then take away into the real world and apply to a craft or a hobby that you have. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm meeting with a lace expert, someone who knows so much about making lace. And I am very, very excited. I'm here with Elena Kinegi Laux, who is a lace maker, and today she is going to take us on a fascinating journey about making lace. You know the value of lace in this time period, right? It was something that was very, very expensive. Is that correct? Absolutely. Um, there's almost no examples of full garments made in lace because it was just too costly. And even kings like Louis XIV, who loved wearing lace, a single pair of cuffs for him could be a commission that took two years to complete. Two years? Two years. For the cuffs? Just for the cuffs, because it was so incredibly labor intensive. What? This depends on the technique, of, of course. course. Something that we're seeing here that's more of a domestic product would have been much quicker to make small trims. So one of the things that I think are iconic of these Dutch portraits from the 17th century are the collars. We see lace on collars, and, and you have this beautiful white lace against the black backdrop of the clothing, which really shows off the lace. What would a collar like that have cost in that time period? Do, we, do you have an idea of the equivalent? We do have some records um, of um, aristocratic and wealthy people purchasing lace collars for themselves and for their family members that paid as much uh, as a year of skilled labor um, wow. that, a re that an average worker, like a working class person, would have brought in, okay. and it would have cost them about a year of labor. That is insane <laughs> to, to think that that is, what, that is how valuable a lace collar was, but it makes so much sense when you see these portraits because you see their face, you see black, and then you just see this white, white collar. And what I would love to do, if, if you would oblige us, is to maybe sit down and could you show us how you make, how you actually make lace? Absolutely, okay. my pleasure. I will say that although it can be difficult to find um, lace makers because you know, we don't we don't have the best PR. Maybe we're working on it. Okay. Um, and we do, we didn't have the best online presence until recently. Now we do. But as soon as you find one lace maker, you find all of us because we're very well connected, even internationally. So that's, that's what I discovered in my own studies and travels. And I've been able to collect skills from all the different regions that I've studied in, which are represented in my setup here. This is actually totally anachronistic. Okay. So the pattern that I'm making is from the earliest bobbin lace pattern book, Le Pompe Opera Nova, which was published by the Sessa brothers in Venice in 1557. Um, and it was a wood woodblock print. Um, you can see it's, it's actually under my pattern here. That's what I'm working directly on top of. So okay. it's almost like, it's almost, it's like a little diagram that it's, I'm, and even though it might look anachronistic that I have different colors and metal thread, a lot of these patterns in the time, because lace making, bobbin lace making was more akin to sort of decorative braiding, it yep. was much simpler than later linen bobbin laces, um, it would have been made in colorful silk and gold. So this isn't too far off, although I'm using cotton, um, which is really, you don't see until the 19th century. So they made lace in colors? Absolutely. Like they didn't just make white and black Absolutely. lace? Absolutely. Yes, there's all, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't survive as much, but we do have examples in the collection here and in other collections of lace as early as the 16th century in a variety of colors, wow. which is very cool to see. Okay, so, can we just dive right in and can yeah. you tell me, tell me what you know? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and what you're doing, please? Yes, so essentially, in bobbin lace, it may look intimidating that I have 22 pairs on here, but I'm not thinking about all of my pairs at once. What do you call them? Um, pairs of bobbin. So bobbin pairs. lace is always worked in pairs. So you're thinking about 
individual pairs at a time. They sort of, they tend to stay together, although they can get mixed up depending on what you're doing. So you said you have 22 pairs. 22 Does that mean pairs. you have 44 bobbins? 44 bobbins. Okay. And these are East Midland style bobbins from England because okay. they have the little spangled beads on the bottom mm -hmm. that we call spangles to keep them from rolling around. Okay. So they are my preference because they're pretty. And okay. I like shiny things. things. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially what I'm doing here, I'm going to insert a pin which acts as a sort of scaffolding to hold my stitches in place so that they don't collapse on themselves. Yeah. And then what I'm doing in this little portion here with the gold thread is I'm using this pair which is called my worker pair, to travel through my passive pairs back and forth. These three pairs are my passive pairs. And okay. I'm doing whole stitches back and forth and pinning at each end to support the shape. And essentially, it's a little bit like, if you're familiar with weaving, a warp and, and a, a weft. weft. Okay. And it gets more complicated the more you do. But this pattern, because it's very early, only uses about three techniques. So it's whole stitch, four strand braiding, and picots. And that's really about all it all it takes. So this is actually quite an easy pattern to, for what it looks like. So I'm passing my worker pair through, going to tension a little bit. The metal thread is a little finicky. And now, I've, as you can see, I've brought it all the way across. Uh, across these three pairs. These three pairs. So I will pin at this pinhole here, just like this. Hold on, I need to get my glasses. No problem. <laughs> So we're starting, we have the worker pair here and a passive pair here. These are the three passive pairs. We're going to go back across. Okay. And this can be confusing for knitters, but there's no knit and purl. You do the stitches the exact same way, whatever direction you're going. Okay. And you're interlacing the pairs through each other. So essentially I have my worker pair and I want to pass it through my passive pair. So I'm going to do a whole stitch. Can I stop you for a second? Yeah, absolutely. You're saying stitch. Yes. You're, you're referencing this as stitch. They're stitches. In my mind, though, could I accurately view it as weaving? Like, it is a little bit like off-loom weaving. Could yes. I could I view this as could I view this as the warp, and could I view this as the weft? And I need to carry the weft over and under the warp, or or no? You can, however, this is more like a lino weave because it's a twisted interlacing. It's yeah. like a whole stitch. If you're familiar with like gauze weave. Um, so, and the other thing is that in bobbin lace, unlike on a loom, you're not stuck in the perpendicular. So in this particular area, I'm doing, this is the worker and these are the passives, but that won't continue. Once I get to this solid area, mm -hmm. I'll be doing something totally different. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna watch you then. Yeah, so, so I, will, I will just break down the, there's only really two steps that are the foundation to all bobbin lace, which sounds unbelievable, but it's true. And basically that's, left over right and right over left. Those are the only ways that you can move the bobbins. Okay. So you, to do the first step of whole stitch, which is what I'm going to do now. And please do it very slowly. Very slowly. Okay. So the first step is cross. Cross always means left over right. Left and I will take over right left or over right. this left over right? So this left over right. So it's the second bobbin over the third. Okay. And then I'm going to do twist, which is right over left. And I'm going to take two of them and carry them over. I can't. Yes, you can. I can't. Yes, you can. <laughs> I can't. It's too confusing. And then I'm going to do cross again. And then I'm going to do twist again. And this, these four steps, have created a whole stitch. So essentially, I'm just doing a cloth stitch, which is cross, mm -hmm. twist, cross, and continue. Cross, twist, cross. OK, can I do the next one? Oh, no, no maybe I won't do it on this cross, one. Cross, <laughs> twist, Cross, I have a pillow for you, actually, okay, if okay, you'd like to okay, try it, sure. and cross, twist, cross. So now, if I keep doing that, I'll create this Web. diagonally woven and interlaced diamond shape in okay. the middle. So just seeing that little bit woven, it makes sense that it took a long time to make elaborate lace. Yes. A very long time. I think that the wonderful thing in seeing this is if you knew how this was made and then you either had someone make lace for you or you purchased a piece of lace, you would really value it. Like Absolutely. it was something that you would really value and that it meant something to you. Uh, this is fascinating. It's just amazing. <laughs> My, well, I think, are you ready to try? I'm ready okay, to try. Great. I'm going to try to, I'm going to, 
you're be a be good great. student and I'm going to listen <laughs> and I'm going to focus and I'm going to say, I'm not going to say that I can't do it. Okay. It's time for your lesson. It's time for my lesson. So it's time for my lace, my first ever lace lesson. Your first ever lace lesson. I lesson. can't believe this is happening. So this pillow, just so you know, it's my favorite for beginners. It's a Belgian cookie pillow. Okay. Um, so it's called that because it's shaped like a little cookie. But that also taught me that the reason in the U.S. that we call a cookie a cookie and mm -hmm. not a biscuit is because we get it from Dutch. So wait, is that a Dutch word? It's a Dutch word. Cookie? Cookie. Really? Yes. Okay. So this is a cookie pillow. I learned things you learn from being a lace maker. Anyway, so these are your passive pairs here. As we discussed, you have five passive pairs and you have one worker pair that's um, on the same pin as one of your passives. Okay. So you're going to start. So there's one passive pair, two, three, four, five. five. Okay. And this is your one worker pair. It's your special antique pair. Okay. Um, the rest are more contemporary, but they're all English spangled bobbins. So I'm going to move these to the side and we're going to start with these two pairs. And you're going to make a cloth stitch, which I will demonstrate for you first. I'll let you do the next one. A cloth? Cloth stitch. Cloth, cloth stitch. Cloth stitch. Okay. And it's called that because it's essentially, it's also called a linen stitch mm -hmm. because it's essentially plain weave. Okay. But you're using two threads at once. Two threads are connecting through two threads. Okay. Rather than one over one, under one, like in weaving. Yeah. So essentially, you're going to do your two steps. You're going to be cross, which is two over three. It's left over right twist, which is two and four over one and three, if that's helpful to you, which is like this. I'll demo first okay, and I'll sure. let you do the next one. And then you're going to do one more cross to bring these all the way through each other, which is two over three like this. And now the passive pair goes to the side okay. and you grab the next pair. So now you're going to do cross. Oh, it moves. Tension. Yes. Okay. Yes. Tension. It's, okay. it's because it's just been set up, so it, don't worry okay. about that too much. It's the beginning. And then you're going to twist. You're moving bobbins two and four this, over one and three. Like this? Yes. Each okay. one place. Exactly. And then you'll cross again. This one over this one? Perfect. Cross. Twist. Twist. Cross. Perfect. I knew you'd be a natural. <laughs> Even if you didn't, I believed it. Cross, twist, cross. Great. Now, how do we know which, what's the sequence? Like, it's this, oh, I see. Yes, okay. It's exactly. You make it clean up you there. You see where the threads are coming from, and right. you want to make sure they're not twisted. Sometimes you want them to be, but not in this case. Okay. We're making cloth stitch. Cross, mm -hmm. twist, Cross. Excellent. Is that okay? Yes, perfect. Okay. And you can see how the worker pair is traveling through all the passives and interlacing with them. Wow. And the, then your last passive. Okay. Yeah. Cro cross. Twist. Excellent. So you've made it all the way across. It's time to pin. I did it. So you're going to do one <laughs> twist on your pair, which is right over left. To lock it. To, to or... give it a little length around the pin that you want to. Oh, I don't understand why we, so, so it was right. like this. So you twist. And then you twisted, why, Helena? Twisting creates a little bit of length. And what we're going to do here is we're going to put in a pin yeah. um, between your worker and your passive pairs that your worker pair can go around oh. to tension against. And having okay. a twist there just makes it look tidier when you take it off the pillow. It has a tidier, more finished edge because the two threads don't separate from each other, Okay. if that makes sense. Right. They're so twisted together. It is like a lock. That's a, that's a okay. good way to look at it too. And the and the pin is going above the twist, not like we're not putting the pin in through here. The twist will be pushed back up by the next stitch. Okay. So it, it's in some cases you want to pop the twist above, but it doesn't really matter okay. in this case. But that's very astute observation that you're already noticing these things. I, I, find my, I see I find lace that making I'm, in your future. I find I'm holding my breath for some weird reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like so, this. Or no? Not quite, because okay. you, I, I thought this might happen because you knit. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, many, you said yes, the opposite. you want to go the opposite way. It's instinctive, but in fact, you're still going to go the same way. So it's still cross this way. This way? Exactly. <laughs> and then the pin goes 
the pin is going to go there. Yeah, so you want to tilt it out just slightly. Um, like, like, not, oh, like not this th way, but um, to way? your left. Perfect. Okay. That pushes the threads down so that they don't lift while you're working. I see. And then... And then you I'm will take your next passive pair and just go back. And then... Okay, so... I mean, you can keep cross, going forever as, as far as I'm twist, concerned. Cross. Cross. Twist. Cross. Okay, we need to become friends. Yeah. Because I yes. have so many, so many things. This is... Thank you. Thank My you pleasure. so much. Thank you so much for taking the time to show me how to do this. It's It's... It's more than I can express to you in, in a few words how I, how I actually feel. This has been so special to me to be allowed to come into the Met and to meet you, not only to meet you and talk to you about everything you know, but to have you show us how lace is made. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for coming. Of course.